Coach Ed Ogeron has LSU performing at a high clip right now, heading into the bye and going into a one-versus-two matchup versus Alabama in Tuscaloosa on November 9th. The head coach of the Tigers is kind enough to be here on Tuesday mornings, back on off the bench. Coach, good morning. How are you? Good morning, guys. Great to be on the show as always. Great to have you back. Yes, we, heard a, we heard a highlight there of Clyde, and you were very high on him going into the week, post-game. Uh, what has the junior running back meant to your offense here, and especially what he what he did for you last Saturday? Like I said, when Clyde steps in the room, he's 6'4", 270, man. He, he has he has an attitude about himself. He's a winner. He has the heart of a tiger. Uh, Clyde, you know, they they played seven DBs in the game. They put a little diamond defense to stop our passing game. And credit to our offensive line, credit to Coach Hensbringer of finding the right runs. Coach Craig did a tremendous job. And what can we say about Clyde? Tremendous vision, tremendous balance, and he's hard to, he's hard to tackle. Coach, going into the Auburn game, your team had only played from behind 10 minutes in the season. They were down 20 minutes overall on Saturday versus Auburn. You over, you overcame penalties and, and some special teams mishaps. What did you learn about your team last Saturday? You know, grit, character, uh, the things we talk about, boys, uh, adversity. You know, football is not always going to go your way. Uh, we were not playing well in some phases of the game. Too many penalties. I think we may have been a little bit too fired up. You know, we're the least penalized football team in the SEC going into this game. So yeah. uh, we're going to have to we have to get that fixed, and it's going to start today. But, you know, I, I knew our guys were going to fight. And when you have some leadership like we have and you have a quarterback like like Joe Burrow, you have a chance to win any game. And, and, and Coach, I, I want to talk to you specifically about this Auburn game and, and what Kevin Steele did uh, in order to try to stop y'all. He came out in a look that they had not put on film before this uh, – have you so it's a defense they hadn't shown all year, right? Have you ever coached an offense that was so threatening that it demanded this sort of gamesmanship? No, no, I haven't, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's called respect, and, and you know it was a pretty good scheme coach Kevin, that Coach uh, Kevin Steele had. And uh, but but there were some holes in it, like any scheme is. When you overcompensate for one thing, you got to find holes in the other. One. And our staff did, and, and it was the run. And having 200 yards rushing, well, what I thought was the best defensive line we saw all year was a tremendous job by our yeah. football team. And, and and I guess, so what, what's that process like where you come out and you're like, oh, wow, wait, what 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 is this? Is it three one seven they're in right now? Like, yeah. like how, how, do, how does that go about to where you uh, eventually land on, okay, this is what we need to do in order to be successful? Yeah. Well, you grind through it, you know. Obviously, uh, there's something you had seen on film. You'd have a game plan for it. We didn't have a game plan for it. We never saw it, but we grinded through it. And all of a sudden, you know, they're walking their outside linebackers out on number two, and there's nobody to see gap. So we, we found the C gap, and it was just uh, through guys just pecking through it, grinding through it, communication on the headsets through with uh, with Steve and Joe and Jimmy, and they found the right the right plays, and it worked. And, 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 and yeah, I mean, it absolutely worked. 120 rushing yards in the second half alone. Um I want, to, I want to ask you about that offensive line because early on, uh, that very good Auburn D-line was getting the best of them. I thought Burrow navigating the pocket on the Terrace Marshall touchdown drive was unreal. Uh, but it looked like the O-line really settled in as the game went on. Uh, what do you see out of that crew up front? I saw them fighting. I saw them battling. Uh, you know, um, Derek Brown is a mountain of a man, as you know, and uh, he had a tremendous bull rush, and he was beating on some bull rush a couple of times, but our guys kept on fighting. They kept on battling, and it did help that Joe can extend plays with his feet. I think overall just took a great team effort. And and, and one guy, Coach, that um, has had a really big impact both in receiving and the running game and even pass protection this year has been Thad Moss. Yeah. Uh, what what what's what's his emergence meant to this team? Yeah, well, you you know, as you know, you always want a tight end as a weapon, and you know a lot of tight ends can catch the ball, some uh, blocking tight ends, but he's both, and uh, he can he's smart, he's very athletic, he's a good blocker. Uh, that is probably the most improved player on our football team, and I'm very proud of. Him. Coach Ed Ogeron joining us here off the bench, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, in Alexandria. Coach, uh, Grant Delpit, your star on defense, may have made the play of the game on Saturday in chasing down D.J. Williams and forcing him out of bounds on that yeah. long run that he had. Yeah. Um, talk yeah. about that specific play and, and 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 Delpit and how he's come along here in his junior season. You know, we talk, always talk 
about effort. And uh, Sam Nader talks to our team every year. There, I forget what game it was. And one of the guys from LSU ran somebody down and tackled them on the one yard line. They had a goal line stance. And, and some of those some of those great games were decided by great players making great effort plays. And that, that's one play that will always stand out in LSU history to play made by Grant. It gave us a chance to win the game. Jacoby Stevens, back-to-back weeks, recognized by the conference as the player of the week. Um, everybody talks about Delpit, but you've got another safety that seems like yeah. it's really coming along. Yeah. You know, he plays the game at all, all – the way it ought to be played. He plays at a fevered pitch now. He's a high-intensity young man. He's a five-star coming out of Tennessee. His family is from Louisiana. We're so glad we have him. Pound for pound, Jacoby Stevens is the strongest player on our football team. He's a force to deal with. Everything okay with Delpit after Saturday? Oh, yeah, it's going to be fine. You know, uh, he, We're going to heal up this open day week. We'll do some recruiting. Uh, get ready for our next opponent, and we're going to start full steam next Monday. Coach, I want to ask you about a guy, and we're talking to LSU head football coach Ed Ogeron here on Off the Bench. Um, I, I want to ask you about Michael Divinity uh, because his his path has been interesting where in the spring he needed to move to the middle. Looked like that was really working out. Some other guys have emerged in the middle that have been great. Uh, it looks like he's back on the edge now. He made some plays last game. Um, do, do you feel like Divinity settled into to his spot on this defense now? No question. And Mike is an unselfish player. We asked him to move to stack linebacker. He did. But, you know, Patrick Queen and Jacob was playing so well that we needed yeah. uh, another guy at outside linebacker. And Killer Mom was hurt. So we were kind of hurting at that position. So Mike came played. And now we're playing him at a kind of a joker position where he can rush the passer. He's had more sacks than anybody in the last couple of games. He's a playmaker. He's an inspirational leader. you got to be fired up how your defensive line's playing right now. Get better, yeah. I really, I'm really excited about the player Tyler Shelvin. Yeah, I, I, I think he's he's becoming a force in the middle. I'm really excited about the play of our defensive ends. We're playing the run very well. We still need to get a better pass rush. But you know, other than that 70 yard run, we held Auburn I think 60 yards. But they're a great rushing team. Now we have our work cut out for us, and we have to continue to improve and have a great week of practice. Apu seems to be playing more snaps for you. Yeah, yeah, and he, I just watched him. I was watching the tape this morning, running it down. He still has to a little development to go. Has to lose a couple of pounds. But I think he's going to be an excellent player for us. Coach, another play that you can point to. We talked about the Delpit play, but another point, uh, another play that we highlighted yesterday was, was Burrow's scramble for the long first down, where he got hit on the boundary and it yeah. is a, a rough hit. I think he hit five of six passes after that and hit Terrace Marshall for the touchdown. Yeah. That well, drive was it was, was great. unreal. Um, you yeah. always talk about his toughness, but I guess that was a great example of it, right? Yeah, I may have to get him tackled before the game in the locker room. <laughs> we can just start the game that way, you know. But, no, he's a gamer, and, and, the, and the harder he gets hit, the harder he's going to play. He'll give you every ounce of energy he has. He, you know, you talk about intangibles. This guy's intangibles are off the chart. What about uh, – what, what, how, how did the meeting room react to that spin move that he pulled on the sideline? Okay, okay, okay. So we'll, we'll show the plays today, and I know the guys will be in a great mood, and it'll be good. We show the TV copy today, and that play is definitely going to be shown. But <laughs> a lot of plays will be shown. Our team is happy right now. and But as we know, we got a strong finish to the season. Uh, we're going to give them some rest this week and then come back next Sunday ready to go. Okay, so that, that kind of goes right into where we wanted to go next, which is um, as you prepare to enter this bye week, uh, how do you approach it? Like, how do you manage it this late in the season? What are the goals for this bye week? Well, first of all, self-scout, um, offense and defense, most of the guys stayed out. Only three of us out recruiting yesterday, which we had a fantastic day. Yes, you yes. Uh, recruiting and recruiting is going very well. Uh, guys stayed in self-scout. Um, Offensive defense, we self scouted each other yesterday in special teams, which was a great day. We have a staff meeting today. Today's Tell the Truth Monday. We'll go out there and have a short practice. Uh, tomorrow will be a full padded practice. We'll work on tackling. And then Thursday, we'll have the Tiger Bowl. We'll let the young guys play. The older guys are going to coach. Nice. <laughs> uh, so they're going to really have a week off uh, of rest, which we need at this time of the season, and then get ready to go next week. Do you change anything this week of what you've done in the past during this preparation? Say that again now. Do, do, do you change anything during the bye week of, of this process? You've gone through this now. This will be your third time as the head coach. Yep. Do, do, do you change anything during this this part of the prep? Yeah. 
No, no, this is the same thing. You know, we, we I've kind of pulled back a little bit more because it's this late in the season. Now, the first bye week, we went a little bit harder. We had a Thursday practice, and we had two practices, but this week we're only going to have one. I want our guys to be healthy. I want them to be rested. They're playing very well. I think the key now is the health of our football team and the energy that we're going to bring next uh, Saturday night. Coach, uh, can you tell us, do you know yet, who's going to be the coaches for the young guy game of each team? I don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I, I got to meet with our, I got to meet with our staff. They've been working on that stuff yesterday while I was recruit, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, good ideas. But as soon as we know, we'll let you guys know. Okay. Yes, sir, Coach. Um, I, I'd imagine that the um, y- your your staff, uh, your shadow staff, has done an excellent job of getting you prepared for for this game, just like they've done every game. Has this kind of been the difference of having these guys, these analysts around, of of having you prepared for for these types of weeks? The amount of information that goes on in this office and the work that goes on in this office. These men are in here from 5 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. Everybody has order. Everybody's directed. The amount of information that we have for our coaches is unbelievable. We you know, Think about this. We have three Super Bowl champion coaches on our staff. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now think what? about the things that goes on in here. And all I wanted as the head coach is to bring – our football players the very best that we can. And I believe right now we're clicking on all cylinders. You got an early scouting report on the tide as you look at them? No, I didn't look at them yet. Obviously, you know, obviously we know who they are. Uh, I have not watched a lot of tape on them. I'm just watching out game tape because I was out yesterday recruiting. Our guys started on them yesterday. We will work on them all week. A lot of our guys are not going anywhere. They'll be working on them throughout the weekend. We'll have a great report on them. And so we'll send you off, Coach, with uh, one on recruiting then. Um, I know you can't talk about specific players, uh, but just how much are you feeling the momentum right now? And then, like, what kind of weapon is that for someone like you who is already so good at recruiting guys? It's fun. It's fun. You know what? And I'll go back to the Florida game. Uh, we had some official visits, some unofficial visits, the crowd, the atmosphere. It was something like those guys have never seen. I was support staff, uh, all the people that work in recruiting, Sheriff Lewis and her staff, Derek Panamski, all those guys that we, when we're coaching football, they're showing them, Colin D'Angelo, uh, Jeff Martin, those guys are showing them around campus. They do a tremendous job of recruiting for us. It takes a team. It takes a whole team. We're very well organized. I will promise our fans this. We are bringing some great players to LSU. I can't wait to see these guys. Do you mention number one in the country to them at all? Uh, I don't have to. Yeah. You know, and I don't talk about that. Because yeah. uh, to me, that doesn't mean a hell of beans yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? right. we, we still have some games left to play. And uh, that's good for our university. It's good for our fans. But right now, we, I mean, we got a, a big-time opponent coming in. We're taking one game at a time. And let's see where it's at. When it really counts. Hell yeah. State's behind your back, Coach. Keep them hot, man. Thank you for the time this morning. Go Tigers.